embedded correlation in equity markets is radically higher than it was 10 years ago, right? which suggests that the volatility profile is different. And if you think about that, it makes sense, right? Because if everybody's buying the S&P 500, um, you would expect, and, and the market is shifting increasingly passive towards those who are buying the S&P 500, you would expect the correlation of those assets to rise. Right? Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's actually what we are seeing. We are seeing the, the underlying correlation on the market at given levels of volatility mm -hmm. is higher and higher and higher. It's about two and a half times what it was in 2000 today. Um, and as a result, that change, you know, the participation in passive strategies, not articulated that you should necessarily be market timing, but the, but the use of passive strategies broadly diffused mm -hmm. has created the same correlations that we saw in the securitized funding markets. I completely disagree. Okay. Um, all an index is, right, is everybody owns these stocks, right, whether it's, you know, the Russell 3000, which is not quite 3000, or the S&P 1500, right? Everybody owns these stocks, and the active managers all own these same stocks. They just put different weights on them. And what an indexer does is take the sort of the average, right, of all the, the votes of all the participants and takes a free ride, okay, on all those decisions and puts weights based on an average of, of the full market, right? It's, that's how market caps are developed. So we just, we're an indexer. We index well over 80% of our public market assets. Um, we do it because it's absolutely the best way to invest. We're buying the same stocks everyone else is. Um, we're doing it at extremely low cost. We don't have manager risk. It's a brilliant way to invest. Look, you know, we own, our concentrations are the companies that the market says are the most valuable, right? Have the best prospects, right? You look, I mean, our concentrations are, you know, you know them, Apple, Google, Facebook you know, all bumps aside, right? It's doubled in the last three years. So we, you can always have a story. There's so many stories out there. We use data. And the data, the data is very compelling. S&P did a, S&P's routinely done these kind of five-year studies where roughly 80%, regardless of what segment, regardless of what time period, that 80% of active managers lose to their benchmarks, okay? And then, and then there was always this sort of fun and games of, well, who are the 20? And the 20 change all the time. And Vanguard and a lot of bunch, bunch of academics have been, done studies on persistence, right, that you, don't, you can't tell who those 20 are. Well, then S&P went a step further, right? And over the last couple of years, they've been, um, doing, they've, they've been publishing 15-year studies. And the numbers did exactly what you'd expect them to do, maybe even a little more dramatic, that 93%, large cap, small cap, domestic, international, whatever you're talking about, 93% of active managers lose, lose to a free passive investment. So why would we pay money for a worse return? It, it just doesn't make any sense.